Hello, my name is Quinn and I'm a Space Systems Engineer with the FreeFlyer software team. Today, I'm going to be talking about modeling asteroid deflection in FreeFlyer. The mission plan we will be going over is based on the exercise that was conducted at the 2021 Planetary Defense Conference. This exercise brings together world experts to discuss the threat to Earth posed by near-Earth objects and actions that could be taken to deflect an object that may impact the Earth. As a note, while this scenario is based on realistic parameters, it is completely fictional and does not describe a real impact event. Additionally, in the scenario worked at the Planetary Defense Conference, the simulated asteroid was only discovered around six months before its potential impact date, and therefore could not be deflected. To allow us to explore deflection trajectories, we assume that the object was discovered six years before a potential impact. While there are different types of deflection methods, the mission plan shown here uses a kinetic impactor, which is a spacecraft that hits the asteroid to alter its course. For simplicity's sake, it is assumed that the spacecraft perfectly transfers its energy to the asteroid. Additionally, the mission plan assumes that the SpaceX Falcon Heavy is used to launch the impactor spacecraft. This is because the values for launch energy C3 and correlated spacecraft mass for the Falcon Heavy were available as part of the NASA JPL and Aerospace Corporation Near-Earth Object Deflection App. This app was also used as a baseline with which the trajectory found in FreeFlyer could be compared against. Now that we've gone over the background for the mission plan, let's examine the output in FreeFlyer. First, the optimizer solves for a trajectory that will allow the impactor to intercept the asteroid. Next, this intercept trajectory is visualized, with a solar system view on the left and an asteroid body fixed view on the right. Following this, the optimizer then refines the trajectory to maximize the separation between Earth and the deflected asteroid at the time of impact. After the second optimization process is complete, the trajectory is again visualized. This time, however, we continue propagating after the asteroid has been deflected. The separation between the deflected and undeflected asteroids is shown on the right. The separation grows over time as their orbits are now slightly different. We can also see the final values for launch energy, spacecraft mass, and the delta V applied to the asteroid by the deflection. You'll note that the delta V values are all on the order of tens of millimeters per second. Even such a small change in the asteroid's orbit is enough to deflect it away from Earth. Finally, we see that the deflected asteroid misses the Earth at a distance of 1.697 Earth radii, which is measured beyond the surface of the Earth. Conversely, we see that the undeflected asteroid solidly impacts the Earth. Next, let's take a look at some of the script in this mission plan. The mission plan is divided up across 11 freeforms. The first several freeforms are primarily set up, and since the optimization processes are the items of interest here, we'll jump in to freeform 6. The first optimization is configured with five state variables and two constraints. For all of the state variables, the initial value was found using the JPL Aerospace Corporation Near-Earth Asteroid Deflection Tool. For the launch and intercept epochs, the upper and lower bounds are set as a 50-day range on either side of the respective epochs. For each of the launch delta V state variables, the bounds are set based on what we expect to be a reasonable range for delta V. Next up are the two constraints. The first constraint is C3, or launch energy, which is constrained between 0 and 60 as those are the possible values for escape energy from the SpaceX Falcon Heavy. The other state variable is the impact range, which is the range between the spacecraft and the asteroid at the time of intercept. However, given that there is some error in the simulation, and an actual spacecraft would be employing a guidance algorithm, we allow the spacecraft to be anywhere between 0 and 50 kilometers away from the asteroid at the time of deflection. This provides us an answer that's close enough to the real-world value, while still allowing the optimizer to solve in a reasonable amount of time. You'll also note that each of the state variables and constraints has a scale factor applied to it. This helps the optimizer converge even faster. Finally, we save off the interceptor spacecraft as an object to process, and we configure our two grid windows to show statistics about the optimization process. Then, at the end of the freeform, we load the IPOPT optimization engine. Now that we've finished walking through freeform 6, We'll move to Freeform 7 and examine the evaluation of the first optimization process. We begin the first evaluation loop by updating the state variables and restoring the objects in process. 
After that, we get the values for the launch and intercept epochs using the optimizer get state variable value method. Next, we configure the interceptor spacecraft. We set its epoch to be equal to the launch epoch, and we set its position to be 100,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. We also set it to have zero velocity at this point. We set the spacecraft to be 100,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth to get it out of Earth's gravity well. This reduces the amount of sensitivity in the optimization process. After configuring the spacecraft, we set up our launch burn by getting the state variable values for the V, N, and B components of the burn. We then apply this maneuver to the spacecraft. After the spacecraft has been maneuvered, we calculate its launch energy by subtracting its velocity from the velocity of the Earth. We then apply the C3 value to the constraint. Next, we step the interceptor to the intercept epoch. Then, we evaluate the range from the asteroid at that time and apply that to the impact range constraint. Finally, we call the optimizer.solveconstraints method since we're not looking to minimize or maximize a value here. We're just looking to find a feasible trajectory. Next, we'll move to Freeform 8 and look at how the first optimization process is visualized. The first thing we do is reconfigure the output layout to show the solar system view and the intercept view. After that, we restore the objects in process and switch the interceptor's propagator to use a fixed step size. Following that, we go through a process very similar to the evaluation loop. We start by getting the values for the launch and intercept epochs from the best state variable values. We then configure the interceptor again the same way it was configured during the evaluation loop. After that, we get the best values for the launch delta v and apply the maneuver to the spacecraft. We then use a while stepping loop to propagate the interceptor and a spacecraft representing the PDC-21 asteroid to half an hour before the intercept epoch. After that, we reduce our step size to 10 seconds so that we can see the intercept in greater detail, and then we propagate again to the exact intercept epoch. Finally, we pause the mission plan for three seconds and reset some configurations. Now that we've talked through the first optimization process, let's move into the second optimization process where the trajectory is refined to find a course that maximizes the distance between the asteroid and the Earth at the time of impact. We'll start with Freeform 9, where we configure the second optimization process. The second optimization process is configured similarly to the first optimization process. Again, we use five state variables and two constraints. This time, however, the state variables are seeded with the best state variable values from the first optimization process, and the bounds are reduced. Additionally, we add a second object to process, the PDC-21 deflect spacecraft, which represents the trajectory of the asteroid after it has been deflected. Another difference is that we use the NLOPT optimization engine with the default settings, rather than the IPOPT optimization engine. At the end of this freeform, we reconfigure the output layout to show the Jacobian and optimization grid windows alongside the solar view. Now that we've looked at the setup for the second optimization process, let's go into the second evaluation loop in Freeform 10. Again, this Freeform has a similar structure to the evaluation loop for the first optimization process, with a few notable differences. One of the first things we do is set the mass of the PDC-21 asteroid. The value was obtained from one of the briefings at the 2021 Planetary Defense Conference. After that, we follow the same process we saw before, where we update the state variables, restore objects in process, update the launch intercept epochs, configure the spacecraft, maneuver the spacecraft, and calculate the value for launch energy. After we calculate launch energy, we check if it's in the range of 0 to 60. If it is, we call a procedure that interpolates between values for the spacecraft mass and launch energy for the SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. If it's outside of this range, the procedure won't work, so we set the mass to be equal to 1. After we've found the value for the mass of the interceptor spacecraft, we step it to the intercept epoch. Again, we check the range at this time and apply it to the range constraint. After that, we step the spacecraft back one day to find the direction with which it's approaching the asteroid. It is also at this point that we calculate the change in velocity caused by the impact of the interceptor spacecraft with the asteroid. The change in velocity is found by combining the conservation of momentum and conservation of energy equations, and assuming a perfectly elastic collision, and that the interceptor spacecraft has zero relative velocity after it impacts the asteroid. After we've calculated the velocity, we set up the PDC-21 deflect spacecraft to have the same Cartesian state as the PDC-21 asteroid. 
We then apply the change in velocity to the PDC-21 deflect spacecraft using an impulsive burn. After applying the change in velocity, we step the deflected spacecraft to a day before the projected impact with Earth. We then step the spacecraft to its closest approach with Earth. After that, we call the optimizer-maximize method to maximize the range between the deflected spacecraft and the Earth, normalized by the Earth radius. Normalizing by the Earth radius allows the optimizer to work with smaller numbers, which helps it converge faster. Additionally, we subtract one Earth radii from this, as we're looking to find the maximum miss distance, rather than the maximum distance from the center of the Earth. We'll now move to our last freeform, Freeform 11, where we visualize the second optimization process. This freeform starts out by again rearranging the output layout. After that, we restore the objects in process and set both spacecraft to use a fixed step size. We get the best values for the launch and intercept epochs, configure the interceptor spacecraft, and apply the launch burn with the best values for delta v. We then calculate the launch energy and call the procedure to find the spacecraft mass based on that launch energy. As a note, we don't have to use an if statement here since we know that if the optimizer converged, it found a value in the acceptable range. We then report out the launch energy and interceptor mass to the console and step the interceptor to one day before the intercept epoch. At that time, we calculate the change in velocity using the same equation as before and report that out to the console as well. We then step to just a half an hour before the interceptor impacts the asteroid. At that time, we set the interceptor to use a much smaller step size so we can examine the impact in greater detail. We then set the interceptor back to using a one-day step size to speed up the remaining propagation. We reconfigure the output layout to show the deflected view instead of the intercept view. Next, we configure the deflected spacecraft to have the same state as the PDC-21 asteroid, and we apply the change in velocity from the impact as an impulsive burn. We then step both spacecraft to a quarter day before impact, updating both the solar view and the deflected view. At this time, we reconfigure our output layout to hide the deflected view and show the Earth-centered view. Since the spice ephemeris we're using to propagate the PDC-21 asteroid doesn't go all the way to impact, we set that spacecraft to use a two-body propagator for the final bit of propagation. We also reduce the propagator step size to be 100 seconds. Then we step all the objects to just after the time of impact. At the end, we report out the final miss distance normalized by the radius of the Earth. Now that we've gone over some of the script in this mission plan, let's examine the output one last time. So, to summarize, using two optimization processes, a successful deflection solution was found. Additionally, the numbers reported by FreeFlyer were similar to the numbers reported from the NASA JPL Aerospace Corporation Near-Earth Object Deflection App. For starters, the C3 value reported by FreeFlyer was 14.559 km squared per second squared, and the C3 value from the app was 15.922 km squared per second squared. Additionally, the interceptor mass, which is a function of C3, came out as 8,188 kilograms from FreeFlyer and 7,852 kilograms from the app, which is due to the app's higher C3 value than FreeFlyer. But perhaps the most significant numbers were the miss distance. The miss distance reported by FreeFlyer was 1.697 Earth radii, and the miss distance reported by the app was 1.253 Earth radii. Now some of these differences can be attributed to the different approaches used to model the situation. 
For instance, the interpolation method used to find spacecraft mass values based on C3 in FreeFlyer is likely different from the way spacecraft mass values are calculated in the Near Earth Object Deflection app. Another difference is the use of a higher fidelity force model along with numerical propagation done in FreeFlyer compared with basic two-body solutions and a Lambert solver from the Near Earth Object Deflection app. Finally, one of the key reasons why FreeFlyer was able to find a larger missed distance than the Near Earth Object app is that FreeFlyer was using an optimizer that was trying to maximize the distance of the asteroid at its closest approach to Earth, compared with the Near Earth Object app, which simply reports out any deflection solution. This concludes our walkthrough of modeling an optimal asteroid deflection in FreeFlyer. To learn more about optimization in FreeFlyer, you can review some of these other videos on our YouTube channel. Additionally, you can explore these topics in our help file. If you have any questions about using FreeFlyer, or how FreeFlyer could be used to meet your needs, feel free to reach out to our technical support team by phone or email.